This is Tyler Baker, the pastor of Valiant Baptist Church located in Jacksonville, Florida. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the very popular subject of end times Bible prophecy. And specifically, I want to touch on the topic of the mark of the beast. Now, in these last days, it seems like every week, every month, every year, there's new technology that's being developed. And Bible believers are looking at the Bible, they're looking at the prophecies of the Bible, and they're trying to figure out how our modern day technology, this newly developed technology, is going to tie in with the prophecies of the mark of the beast. The most widely accepted view or theory on what the mark of the beast is going to be is the theory of the RFID chip. Now, if you're not familiar with an RFID chip, what it is is a radio frequency ID chip that is taken and implanted into something. It is, as of late, five, ten years ago, uh, at least, been publicly planted into beings, been publicly planted into dogs, into different types of animals, and human beings. And this is a chip that is implanted in the skin, and with a wave or a scan, you can scan a series of radio frequencies that gives a series of numbers, and you can ID through you know uh, binary digits what you're looking for and represents you know, uh, uh, someone's name, social security, all of those things can be embedded into these codes. Now, a lot of people have accepted the theory that an RFID chip is actually what will be implemented and that is what's prophesied when it talks about the mark of the beast. In this video, I'm gonna be discussing what the mark of the beast is, number one, but I'm also gonna be showing you why the mark of the beast is not going to be an RFID chip as is, is believed by many people. Now, in Revelation chapter number 13, it's considered the chapter of the beast. And at the end of the chapter, we find the most details here other than anywhere else in the Bible on the subject of the mark of the beast. Verse number 15, I'm going to begin reading, talking about the false prophet of the beast that says this, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Verse 16 says this, And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Now, one of the things that I want to start off mentioning to you is that we are explicitly told that this is just that, the mark of the beast. Now, what is a mark? What does the word in the English language mark mean? It means some sort of print. We're also told with that in mind, a mark or a print, it says in verse number 17 that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast. So notice, notice interchangeable that the mark is used interchangeable with the name of the beast. So you could also have the name of the beast on your right hand or in your forehead. Or it says this, the number of his name. Now that makes perfect sense. And it is just that printed on the skin or on the outside. What's the purpose of this? It's so that he may identify those that are of the beast. We can see that this is something that is visible. It's something where you can look at someone and identify this mark. Now, the subject of the mark or a mark is not isolated just to the New Testament. It's not isolated to end times. It's actually talked about all the way back to Genesis chapter number four. And this will help us get an idea of what a mark is. In Genesis chapter number four, we see the story of Cain and Abel, where Cain slays his brother Abel. He then pleads his cause with God. And while speaking to God, he tells him that he is going to be sent forth as a fugitive and a vagabond. And anyone that finds him because he's killed his brother is going to want to slay him. Well, God responds to Cain and says, okay, I'm going to set a mark upon you, lest any person that finds you or any man finding him should slay you or slay him. So the purpose of this mark as well is the same thing. It's meant as a mark. It's something that is visible on the outside. It's a print. It's something that you can look at him and identify that's Cain. I shouldn't kill this person. I, I'll read that to you. Genesis chapter number four. It says this in verse number 15. And the Lord said unto him, therefore, whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain, lest any finding him should kill him. So what is the mark of the Lord here that we find? The mark of the Lord that he put on Cain, what was it? Or this mark of God or from God, that is. It's a mark where people can look and identify that's Cain. It's something so that you can visibly see and identify who this person is. 
A mark is also spoken of in Ezekiel chapter number 9. Now this is said to be a parallel with the mark of the beast. And it makes perfect sense because it's really a contrast. Because Satan is the great imitator. He is the great counterfeiter. He always wants to imitate that which is right. He wants to imitate God. We see when Satan comes to the earth, he comes as the Antichrist who is opposing and who is in the place of or trying to be in the place of God. We know that Satan wants to be like the Most High from the book of Isaiah. So he tries to come to the earth. And when he comes, how is he represented? He comes on a white horse wearing white and he's got a crown on his head. Well, how does Jesus Christ come? He comes on a white horse wearing white and he has a crown on his head. So we can see that Satan often tries to imitate the Lord. Well, here in Ezekiel chapter number 9, we're, to we're told of the mark of the Lord. This is actually found in context of end times Bible prophecy. And what we have in Ezekiel 9, we're told of a vision of six men that come to Ezekiel that have a slaughtering weapon in their hand, a weapon that is used to kill a man. Also with these six men comes a scribe. It says that he has a writer's inkhorn. Okay, well, when this man comes to him, he's told to mark upon the foreheads of the righteous remnant. God tells this man to mark upon the foreheads of the righteous remnant so that the six men, when they go through the city, they know who to kill and who not to kill. And in this case, those that have the mark, they are not going to slay. They are not going to kill. I'm going to read to you here from Ezekiel chapter number 9, uh, verse number, it says in verse number 3, And the glory of the God of Israel was gone up from the cherub, whereupon he was to the threshold of the house. And he called to the man clothed with linen, which had the writer's inkhorn by his side. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst, of, midst thereof. And to the others he said in mine hearing, this is the six with the slaughtering weapon, Go ye after him through the city, smite, let not your eyes spare, neither have ye pity. Slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women, but come not near any man upon whom is the mark, and begin at my sanctuary. Then they began at the ancient men which were before the house. So we see that this is almost identical to the mark of the beast. And it's almost obvious that Satan or the beast is trying to imitate the mark of the Lord found in Ezekiel 9. What do we see God doing? He has a mark. He has a, he has a man go and put this mark upon the foreheads of the righteous men. What's the purpose of the mark? So that they, they going forward to slay, know who to kill and who not to kill. Well, what's, what goes on in Revelation chapter number 13? What happens in the end times during the tribulation? You have the beast, and he has a mark. Where does he put it? He puts it in their forehead. What's the point? So that he knows who to kill and who not to kill. Who does he kill? Those that don't have the mark. Who does the Lord kill? Those that do not have the mark. What's the purpose of the mark in both situations? Well, it would make perfect sense if it's something to visibly look at and to be able to identify who this is. What is it? It's a print. That's what a mark is. We actually get the definition of a mark in Leviticus chapter number 19, verse number 28. And this should be obvious, but here's just the definition of what a mark is. In Leviticus chapter number 19, verse number 28, it says this, You shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead. So notice it says any cuttings in your flesh. Then it says this, for the dead, nor print any marks upon you. I am the Lord. Now, this is... Off, this is understood by everyone to be speaking about tattoos. Now, when a tattoo is actually put on someone, a print or a mark, it goes in the skin and on the skin. We actually have three layers of skin, epidermis, dermis, and then we have the hypodermis. You know, the middle layer of skin there is the dermis, then the epi is on top or above, then we also have the hypodermis. Now, when you get a tattoo, you... That, that marking actually goes on the top layer of the skin, the epa, so it would be a pawn, but then it also goes on that middle layer, which is the dermis. So we can see that a mark or a print would, would be able to be worded in such a way that this goes in and on the body, in and on the forehead, if you will, in and on the hand. Now also, I want you to turn to Revelation uh, chapter number 20 if you're following along with me. And I'm going to explain to you the argument that's used by many people that will try to say that this is an RFID chip. They point to every time where the Bible talks about the mark being in the hand, 
in the forehead. They'll even point to the modern Bible versions who will change in a couple, in a couple incidents to on. That's interesting. The King James Bible very clearly says that the mark of the beast, this mark that will be required for you to buy or sell, will be located in their right hand or in their forehead. And they'll criticize these versions for saying on or upon as in pushing a satanic agenda. Now, changing the Bible, I don't agree with that. Anytime where the Bible says in, I believe that it should say in. I believe the King James Bible is perfect from beginning to end. But let me say this. You need to be very careful when you do that because the Bible actually teaches in the book of Revelation that the mark of the beast goes in, but it also teaches that it goes on or upon. I want you to look in Revelation chapter number 20, verse number four with me. It says this, and I saw thrones and they sat upon them and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God and which had not worshiped the beast, neither his image. Then it says this, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Now, did you catch that? This time, notice that it says that the mark is upon their foreheads. Do you know where it said the mark was put upon, uh, put out on Cain? It was a put. It was put upon Cain. When those men went through the city, the six, they looked at these other men. They looked at all of those of the city, and there was a mark upon their foreheads. Well, what do we see here? A mark that the beast puts upon their foreheads. What's the purpose? It's so that they can identify who this is. So we see that interchangeably, it is in their forehead and upon their forehead. Now, furthermore, if you look in Revelation chapter number 14, Revelation chapter number 14, we're told again about a mark that the Lord has, the mark of the Lord. This is the 144,000 that are marked. And it says this in Revelation chapter number 14, verse number one, speaking about the mark of these men. It says this, and I looked and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion and with him and 140 and 4,000 having his father's name written in their foreheads. Now I want you to notice that it even uses the word written here. And do you know what it says? It says written in their foreheads. Now everyone would understand that this is something that's visible. This is something that you can look at and you can see. The whole purpose of this is that God is sealing them and he puts, it says, his father's name written in their foreheads. So over and over again, we can see that in and on are used interchangeable. Everyone would understand this as being printed upon the skin in one sense, but we could also say in. Now an RFID chip, is that something that goes upon the skin or is that something that exclusively goes in the skin? That's something, of course, that exclusively goes in the skin. You could not say that an RFID chip is upon the skin. But you know what you could say that about is a mark. And when we're studying the Bible, we need to make sure that we don't go beyond what the Bible says. We need to also make sure that we're not interpreting the Bible in light of current events or, in, or interpreting the Bible in light of our modern day technology. Number one, we can see that it's called the mark of the beast. What is a mark? A mark is something that is printed. A mark is talked about being in, and a mark is talked about being upon. A mark is talked about being in, and a mark is talked about being on. We look up a mark throughout the Bible, and what do we see? We see a mark put on someone so that you can visibly identify every time it's talked about whether to kill or not to kill this person. We see that the Lord has a mark. This mark is something go that goes upon the foreheads, which seems to be prophetic of and in contrast of the mark of the beast. We know that Satan is a great imitator, so that he's probably imitating the mark of the Lord. Well, what was the Lord's mark? It was actually done with a, the writer's ink pen, where he writes upon their foreheads so that they can look and visibly see this person. Now, what else do we see? We see here in Revelation 14, we see that the mark that is given to the 144,000, that it is said that it is in their foreheads. And furthermore, it is said that it is written. So it's obviously something that is on the outside, but still said to be in their foreheads. We also see even within the book of Revelation that the mark of the beast is said to be upon and at the same time in their hand or in their forehead 
either one. So this is their sole argument. Those that believe that the mark of the beast is going to be an RFID chip. What they say is because the Bible teaches that it is in their hand or in their forehead, therefore it cannot be something printed upon them or something written upon them because it says in and not on. Well, once we see that the Bible actually teaches that when something is actually printed upon someone, it will also use the language that it is in their forehead or in their hand, this completely destroys their only argument for it being an RFID chip. Now also to further prove that point, I'm going to read to you from Revelation chapter number 22 verses 3 and 4. It says this, And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him, and they shall see his face. And then it says this, And his name shall be in their foreheads. Now obviously it's not talking about a chip with his name in it or something like that implanted in their foreheads. Just like Revelation chapter number 14, it's saying that his name is written in their foreheads. Now, we would normally say in our language today that it's written on their foreheads, but we can see just by the Bible's language, just within the book of Revelation, we see repeatedly that it's written in their foreheads. Now, I want to further prove this to you that in and on are used interchangeable when it's talking about something being written in or written on. This actually is taken from Revelation 22 at the end of the Bible when John is seeing these events happen. Well, earlier on, when Jesus initially came to John in the beginning of the book of Revelation, he starts first addressing the seven churches and he prophesies about different things to the, the congregation uh, within each of these churches about things to come and promises to come. Well, he talks about this exactly. He talks about this taking place about it being written in their foreheads. But I want you to notice that the language that Jesus uses, and this is from Revelation chapter number three, verse number 12, it says this, him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, but I will write upon him, notice that, write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God. And I will write upon him my new name. So notice when Jesus talks about this beforehand, he says that it's going to be written upon their foreheads, God's name. Then when we see it take place, what does it say? It's written in their foreheads. Now this makes perfect sense that it's God's name written in their foreheads because what's given to those that take the mark of the beast? Well, it's the beast's name. And what is it? It's of course written in their foreheads. So when we study the Bible, does it look like in the book of Revelation that an RFID chip fits into this prophetically? It doesn't. It looks like it is just what it says it is, a mark, a mark of the beast. Now, one thing in technology that could tie in with this is the, uh, the technology of a UPC barcode. Now, you can look this up yourself. I'm not extremely familiar with the UPC barcode, but I've heard that there are three reference lines in a UPC barcode. One on both of the outside borders on the left and the right, and there right in the center, there's also another reference line. So everything that the computer actually reads as far as the digits is found right there on the left and the right within those, two set, those three sets of lines. I've heard that the numbers that are in those, in those three locations that are reference lines that the computer reads actually make up 666, which that's exactly what the number of the beast is in Revelation chapter number 13, verse number 18. So I don't know, maybe it's possible that it could be a UPC barcode, but what we need to do is we need to be very careful that we're not going beyond what the Bible teaches. We need to be very careful that we're not getting wrapped up in the newest release technology and where we get to the point or the stage where we start interpreting the Bible in light of technology. We always need to have the King James Bible as our final authority in all matters of faith and practice. God bless you and have a good day.